Well, hello and welcome to Assay TV. Today, we're talking with Richard Taylor, who is the CEO of Sensor, a private Australia company uh, focused on using AI technologies to help uh, expedite the exploration process. So, Richard, uh, great to uh, see you here today. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Sensor, uh, bringing some modern techniques to a very old industry. Yeah, no, thanks, and it's great to be here with Assay TV. Uh, Sensor, it's a, it's a new company, but going back and drawing on a wealth of experience from um, our board and from the people who have been developing what is an AI approach to big data, uh, big geological data sets, and being able to discover the next wave of uh, new gold projects in Australia. Mm. And the technology behind it, can you go into that at all? Yeah, no, it's, um, I mean, it's disrupted a number of, um, I guess, related industries in terms of uh, it's gone through mining, through processing, through logistics, uh, applying um, a, uh, a big data approach uh, by fusing together geophysics, geochemistry, geology, putting all that data together and then running high performance uh, machine learning algorithms over that, looking for patterns within the data um, that show to us the very special parts of the Earth's crust, uh, which hosts major deposits right around the world. Mm. And this obviously can sort of speed up the process by which uh, geologists can, can go through that data and then help them. They must, they must love this technology. Yeah, I mean, when you go out normally looking at a new prospect or looking at a new area that you want to explore in, um, there's a lot of time that's put into collecting the data, uh, being able to generate it, going through the records of, uh, of WA. I mean, WA is a fantastic jurisdiction to be looking at. Um, it's got more than 100 years of, uh, of data. Um, but what we've done is we've gone out and taken all that data, put it all together into a usable system. So what would take a geologist months can happen literally in seconds. Within one click, you have all of the data that can possibly be available to be able to predict your targets and be able to cite them appropriately for enhancing discovery. Hmm. And so you've used this, this technology to hone in on some targets uh, in the Yilgarn Craton, is that correct? Correct, yeah, the Yilgarn is probably one of the most prolific gold territories um, in, available for us to explore on. And we chose the Yilgarn because of the huge training data set um, built up uh, to be able to um, get the algorithms to be able to run over and make their predictions. Um, it is, I guess, very hot property at the moment, particularly with a gold price north of $2,000 an ounce. Uh, we were able to um, do our homework um, prior to this recent boom, uh, be able to peg some um, tenements in some really uh, good addresses near, um, I guess, areas that have produced many million ounce mines. Um, the beauty of our technology is that we're able to have, for the first time, a, um, a, a deep search uh, capability uh, undercover, and we've been able to look at the geology and terrain that is uh, proximate to some of those um, historic, well-known mines like Sons of Gwalior um, in, uh, in the Yilgain Craton. Mm. And you recently secured a $4 million strategic investment uh, from DGO. Tell us a little bit about what's behind that move. Yeah, I mean, we've got nine highly prospective targets that we've identified with our technology. Uh, we had a number of suitors who are looking to be able to um, take benefit of um, what they see as being a breakthrough technology um, in exploration search. Uh, DGO has been uh, with us uh, for quite a long time, uh, looking and appraising what we've been doing. Um, they have, uh, I guess, a, a very advanced capability and experience in the Yilgarn area um, and a history of uh, making discovery in those uh, areas. They saw the potential not only of the technology, but also of the targets that were being generated out of the system. Um, and it's primarily because of the conventional um, upside from these targets that they invested within Yilgarn Exploration, our subsidiary. And um, we're looking forward to um, getting the results back from our testing program. So we've been out drilling probably since, uh, since last month um, and uh, progressively testing those targets. Mm. And has COVID affected your operations at all? I guess we've been uh, been lucky being Western Australia, it's within its own travel bubble. Uh, we've been uh, lucky to be able to have people and um, drill programs and teams moving relatively freely between those areas. In fact, the biggest issue for us has been uh, being able to get drill rigs and people um, to be able to uh, service uh, that exploration um, as we've tried to expand, uh, while just about everyone else has in, uh, in the Yilgarn, taking advantage of uh, the boom that's been going on over the last few months. 
Mm, fantastic. And, and what are your plans for the next sort of 18 months or so? So I guess the number one priority for us is testing those nine targets and making sure that uh, we've got all the information we can about them. Um, but we're already advancing our plans to expand the data cube to all of Western Australia and into South Australia, uh, working with some top tier clients who are able to uh, support that development. Uh, we see, um, I guess, developments out in the Pilbara as being particularly exciting with the new discoveries that have been made um, around Hemi and, uh, and uh, Winnow, um, and also, I guess, uh, uh, some of the other discoveries in Western Australia, which have been really driving not only where we want to see the technology go, uh, but also where our clients want to see the technology go. And, um, and DGO has been behind us all the way uh, with being able to grow that approach. Hmm. So uh, who, who owns the company? It's a privately owned company. Who are your sort of shareholders? Yeah, most of our shareholders are family offices and high net wealth, uh, high net worth individuals out of, uh, out of Melbourne. Uh, they've been long-term investors um, in a variety of, of companies um, over the time and uh, particularly a number of them uh, worked within BHP and Rio Tinto uh, and were behind development of, uh, I guess, uh, or saw the advantages of the technology coming through uh, machine learning and other aspects of larger companies and uh, saw the potential of the technology that we developed um, in disrupting exploration uh, within this area. Mm. And your background, I mean, you said a lot of your investors obviously have backgrounds in mining. Your background in mining as, as well, is that correct? You know, I've been working with a number of ASX listed companies that have gone from small startup to uh, billion dollar plus uh, companies, companies like Oxiana, Panost, uh, who were, were taken over before and most recently with, with Terram in Australia. Mm. And f comparing your, your experience with Sensor with some of those other companies, you know, to what degree does the use of this new AI technology actually speed up the targeting of potential uh, exploration uh, targets? I think the biggest benefit is uh, being able to generate targets quickly and effectively and be able to see within target areas or within target companies uh, what their exploration potential is within one or two clicks. Uh, usually you'd be putting together large data sets to be able to make an estimate of what the potential is in a new terrain or within uh, a company of interest that you're working with. Uh, but when you have all of the data organised and cleaned at your fingertips, um, it, it really simplifies that. It means that you can focus on the value uplift for the companies. I think if we were doing that, um, if we had available this technology 10, 15 years ago, uh, it would have sped up uh, the m and cycle and the exploration processes uh, because companies that adopt this high technology approach um, clearly have an advantage um, over companies that are sitting and holding uh, large packages of train but don't know what to do with them. Mm. And I suppose for, in terms of investors, um, you know, they're going to hopefully get a, a quicker a return on their investment and less money wasted looking at uh, targets that probably shouldn't be investigated in the first place. Uh, correct. I mean, there's a lot of money that's put um, into to drilling, um, which is an expensive way of exploration. If you look at the oil and gas industry, they put a lot more emphasis on data science prior to drilling expensive holes. And this is where we see minerals exploration heading. It's, it's more spending on data science, um, on uh, working out where to drill, and less about drilling lots of holes to be able to gather that data. Uh, and that's where we can save money, not only for um, explorers, but also for major companies when they're looking at really getting the best value out of every dollar they're spending on exploration. Mm. So you've got this uh, investment uh, from, from DGO and that, and that project is ongoing and you're working with some other partners. Are you looking for sort of similar deals to the DGO deal with people coming in as strategic partners on, on particular projects? Uh, with the expansion to the rest of WA and to South Australia, uh, we definitely see the potential of bringing in partners uh, on those terrains. Um, we'll be bringing to the market um, a portfolio of new targets um, outside of the yield gun uh, probably towards the end of the year um, on the back of hopefully some successful drilling results that we'll pull together out of the yield gun. Um, we're very excited about the program. The initial, um, I guess, um, uh, views on geology have been supported and um, by uh, with things that we generated and been able to um, validate through technical studies that we've had since we've owned the ground. Um, it's been pretty exciting. Uh, that's what's given us the confidence to move ahead faster um, and expand the data cube uh, in WA, South Australia, and hopefully um, all across the continent and globally um, within the next couple of years. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing how things develop over the next uh, 18 months or so with DGO. Um, best of luck with the project and, and great to hear this uh, fascinating insight into a, into a new style company uh, in Australia. So thank you very much, Richard.
Thanks very much, Leo. It's a pleasure.